Creative Commons is a crucial organization when it comes to OER. And Creative Commons is much more but just licensing. So we asked Ryan Merkley, the CEO of Creative Commons, what's next? And we're happy you're taking your time. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I heard there were several activities going on. One was just started, which is CC Search, which not is only about search, is it? No, it's not just about search. Um, so most people know Creative Commons for the licenses, and uh, we hit a fairly significant milestone recently. We passed 1.2 billion licensed works. Uh, you know, content of every type. So OER for sure, but also photos, video, 3D models, all kinds of things. Um, but one of the things that became clear is that there's no front door to the commons and there's no registry. And so there's no way to um, find those works all in one place. Uh, they live in repositories all over the internet, on individual websites, and on uh, platforms for hosting open content. So we wanted to solve for that. And so we're building a project called CC Search. We actually shipped the beta in February of this year. Um, it currently indexes about 1% of the commons, so about 12 million works. Um, and uh, the idea is pretty simple. It's a complete index of every openly licensed work on the web, uh, its location, and its associated metadata. Uh, then there's an API that allows us to talk to the registry, uh, to run queries, or to build services on top of it. And then there's CC Search, which is the uh, front end of that. So that's the service we're building on top of it. Um, we imagine that we'll take that registry and that index and we'll enhance it by using machine learning tools to give us better descriptions or make the content more discoverable or to disambiguate content and be able to, for example, search by creator or those kinds of things, which you can't do today. Um, and then we expect that through the services that are built on top of it, we'll also collect data. Uh, so for example, through CC Search, um, you can submit your own meta tags, you can create lists of your favorite content, and that curatorial data and that user data tells us something about the commons, and over time would tell us what content was more popular, uh, what people thought about the things that they found, so that's our hope. What to expect from the registry, what will come over time? So what I think will come over time, first of all, um, a better way to search and discover works online in multiple categories. So we've started with photography because we wanted something that was easy for people to use and to give us feedback. We've had over 500 people fill out uh, surveys online. We've gotten good feedback, both on the things people like and also the things they hate, uh, which is what you want from a beta, a chance to work openly and to get good feedback. Um, we imagine over time that, one, search will be successful. We know that people want this. Um, and then secondly, um, we expect that others may use the API to integrate um, the registry into other things. Maybe someone will build a new service um, or simply integrate search functionality into their own platforms. One of the things that made CC successful over you know, the first 15 years was CC license tools being exactly where people expected them to be. So. I could share my photo on Flickr without leaving the website. And I think the more CC is part of the stack uh, that it's integrated with the way people create and share, the more likely we'll see more sharing and more collaboration. I understood that it will also uh, be on the data that's already there. So it's not only for the resources published from 2018 on, but it's already working backwards. That's right. Yeah, so we're starting with the idea of indexing all 1.2 billion works and then going forward um, integrating those tools um, into, or integrating, sorry, and then going forward integrating uh, those new works into the, into the registry. I think over time, to answer your, your earlier question about what, what's my hope, um, the license today is a three-part license. The legal code, the uh, human readable deed and the metadata, which everybody knows. Uh, we'd like to add a fourth level to the license, which is software, to have every work that's licensed be backed by that database, to be searchable, uh, to create a, a unique ID or a hash of that work so that we can ultimately find it on the web as it makes its way around the web. Um, and I think that makes CC licenses more powerful and allows us to do a bunch of really uh, 
really excellent things that enhance the license tools, like automated attribution, or uh, user discovery for creators about where their works go, or tracking remix. These are all things we can't do today, we'd love to be able to do, but CC has to be thought of as, a, uh, it's kind of CC as a service, I hate to use a buzzword, but like that's really what we're talking about, is putting CC in the stack so that it can be integrated with all the other places where people already use CC services. It sounds like a huge step for CC. You also are preparing some efforts for very, I think, many small steps, which is a certificate. And I don't know if it's especially for, for open education. So one of the things we've learned is that um, we need more experts and advocates for CC. And one of the ways that we're doing that is by teaching other people the things that we know and the things that our community is best at so that they can be their own advocates and practitioners. So we've developed what we're calling the CC Certificate Program. Um, it's really two things. It's a set of OER about how to work in the open, how CC licensed tools work, and how to apply them in a variety of contexts, including a set of specialized content for particular areas where CC licenses are uh, common. So uh, to start, It's librarians, um, educators, and government. And so we've created the core content and three specializations. And so that's OER that we'll be releasing early next year. And the second part of that is a certification program for people who need it. And for some people in their work uh, or in their, their life, Uh, being able to achieve a certification that demonstrates a proficiency is useful for them. In some cases, it's because it gives them a credibility to speak to their peers and colleagues about, about uh, what they know about CC. In another case, uh, cases that certification uh, might enable them to have that be funded by their employer because they want to know that there's something at the other end of it that proves that they did the work and that they have that knowledge. So. Uh, we'll, we'll launch it as two parts, so some people can just read the content, do what they want with it, do it on their own time and just learn. Other people may want a more formal certification, which will run more like a, kind of like a 12-week MOOC, like online, uh, some coursework, weekly TA sessions, and then an evaluation. So this might be interesting for our German community because many of the uh, German uh, players in the field now are about teaching others about OER, so OER on OER is a crucial thing and I understand that this can be translated and adapted too. Uh, yeah, so we'll share all of the content as OER, which means that um, others can pick it up, adapt it, reuse it, remix it uh, as they want to. Our other hope though is that our international community will step up and become teachers of this program. CC's real strength is our global network, uh, and we have uh, strong teams in Germany and all over Europe and all around the world. And so our hope is that uh, one of the things they'll do is help us internationalize that content and then take up the role of teaching it. Uh, and that, so this becomes a platform for the whole movement, helping other people grow that movement. Speaking of a global network, would you give a pitch on Toronto? So in April of 2018, April 13th to 15th, uh, Creative Commons Global Summit will be in Toronto for the second time. Uh, we hosted there for the first time last year. Uh, for the first time ever, we sold out the event. Uh, it was our largest event ever, almost 30% larger than we've ever had. Uh, so we're really, really excited to be coming back to Toronto, which is my hometown, uh, for another event, which we expect will be bigger uh, than the last one. Uh, it's a community planned event. Uh, we had uh, almost 50 people on the planning committee last year. Huge open call for submissions and just cover the absolute gamut. Everything from brand new people who'd never met CC to long standing advocates, high level meetings, introductory meetings, every kind of field of CC that you could imagine from open ed to open access to 3D modeling, you name it. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of a celebration and also a great place to kind of jump into the pool of Creative Commons. Anything else we should know about Creative Commons plans in 2018? I think we've got a lot of stuff going on, but um, all of our work is done in the open um, and uh, we welcome contributions. So if there's something we've talked about that people are excited about, uh, check us out on our website, creativecommons.org, uh, and find your way in. We, uh, we do all of our work in the open, all our code is open sourced, uh, and so there's lots of different ways to contribute and get involved. Thanks, Ryan, for taking your time. Keep up your good work. Thanks again.
Thanks very much.